Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with Liam Smith out in Dubai. We're in the Burj Al Arab, mate. I mean, can we be anywhere else better in the world right now? Some gaff in there. Hey, some place to be. Not, not a bad place to sit and have some food in. I know, we like that pasta, talk about that pasta. I know you asked for a second bowl, so did I. Yeah, they asked for a bit more. And even the desserts were lovely, to be fair, but obviously it's expected. You didn't, you didn't probably, you know, one of the best hotels around the world, if not the best, so... You know, it was, uh, it was nice to be around, some faces also. There was a, everyone that seems like nearly the whole, every, the whole boxing world is here. So, But we're here for a reason, this combat chain, you can see the, the logos behind you, combat chain, and we just sat in front of a, like over an hour presentation. We, we heard from Eddie Hearn, Richard Schaefer, Kala Sound, Roy, Roy Jones Jr., some of the big names in the sport, even the founders and stuff like that. What was the biggest takeaway that you took from combat chain? And can you just explain about what you took away from it, sorry? Look, it's, it, it, you know, it's hard, you're going to have to read up and learn, learn on a few things, but I think that's just the same in, in this whole crypto situation, you know, the, the, the world, what it's becoming, and we're wanting to go into like a digital side to it. And, um, but obviously, you only have to look at the faces who are here, the people who are sitting up, up talking about it to realise that it is going to benefit boxes, it is going to benefit a difference and, and, and make a change, and, you know, it is all worthwhile to, to get into. From a boxer's point of view, you know, you're... Even to the a box being insured, you know, we get injured in the ring. Just a little couple of things that I've looked at, you know, we get injured in the ring and can't fight again, you know, I think it's a minimum $250,000 to, 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 to the boxer or to the family. You know, God forbid, you know, a boxer dies in the ring, which we all know the sport we're in, it, it, you know, it happens, unfortunately. You know, I think there's a insured for a minimum of a million dollars, so that isn't in place up, 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 up of, of yet, so. You know, if combat chain can bring that then you know it's worth looking into for fighters and you know if it's going to make a difference then you know i'm all for it and i believe it is going to you look at the faces we've got the the biggest names in boxing past and present in here now we've got the biggest promoters in boxing at the moment so you know if they're here backing it then i'm sure it's going to take off do you understand nfts do you understand any of that are you interested in the nft world uh, yeah i'd love to obviously i've seen them I, I i don't know how it fully works i might be a liar if i say i did but i'd love to i'd love to get involved obviously I, I, i've seen bits how it works but i'm not clued up but i will i will try to be you know i'm going to try and learn how to be before it fully takes off and i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little bit of homework yeah, we're talking about the crypto side of thing and uh, the NFTs, but there's a lot more. You mentioned insurance for the fighters on this as well. But for young fighters coming through, like I, I spoke to Josh Taylor and we just program about this as well, that a lot of kids do put in the work, but they can't sell the tickets, so they don't get in the big shows. But they've got the talent. You know what I mean? Only a slight few, few like yourself become world champion. So what does what does Combat Chain do for these young kids that can't sell the tickets but have the talent? Do you think that that's going to help them support them to get where they need to be? Yeah, definitely. I think more so. You know, more so... It, for a prospect or a high established world champion I think it's ideal for you know in the middle maybe not so much um, I think you're coming through it's going to help you get noticed help you you know get uh, there's, there's a lot more to it you know people can kind of like buy into young prospects maybe like not so much like a sponsor but you know put money into them like like put money into gyms they can you know, fans can sponsor them as well yeah, yeah you know you can, you can see a prospect you like who can't afford not, not really can't afford the full team, but a prospect who's having a debut can't really afford to bring on a nutritionist, bring on a strength coach. You, you see your U6 and your, you know, your top fighters, Pro Grace, Josh Taylor, they're walking around with a nutritionist, they're walking around with a strength coach, they're walking around with a physio, and then they've got the cut man, chief seconds, trainer, six people. You know, it's a lot of people. People making debuts and having, in the first five fights, can't afford that many people. So... You can maybe you, can, you know, you can buy into them and help them along that way. In a sense, it's just digital. Everything is going digital at the moment. Selling tickets that way, you know, buying after fight passes. You know, uh, uh, there's a lot more. Again, there's people more clued up about it than I am. But what I've seen, what I've understood about it, I've been very, very interested in. And I know there's a lot more that I'm going to be interested in once I once I learn a little, little bit more about it. So what is next for you then? I mean, you, you've probably got a smile on your face, you probably can't let on too much, but I'm, I don't know if you can enlighten anyone, the fans. Have you got a date? Have you got an opponent? What's next for Liam Smith? Yeah, obviously I'm going to say it again. I'm, I'm sick of saying the name, so I can't wait for it to be announced or be finalised or you know be, be right in front of me. But, you know, the Jesse Vargas fight is one. Tunes go out the ring with Fowler. You know, Eddie, Eddie said he's agreed. So let's hope he has agreed now and we can get that fight going. I'm, I'm told it's basically done. 
I think we're waiting on an announcement very, very soon, and you know, hopefully we can we can, we can get it going uh, before the end of February. So that's one that I'm looking forward to. It's one that has niggled me for a little bit now. It's you know more I wanted the fight, and now I feel like it's done me head, and so I, you know I can't wait for the fight now. And I think uh, a lot of that's being down to Jesse, you know, with him messing about with all kinds of other shite, but. Hopefully we can get him in the ring soon and you know, we can put that aside. Well, end of February, mate. Whatever it is in the world, if it's Vegas, I can't go. My missus is pregnant, so listen, if I don't make it, good luck. But if it is in the end of February, man, and good luck because you've been wanting to fight. But I want to go back to the, the Fowler fight and stuff like that. <clears throat> when I was watching the fight in the house, did, did he surprise you in the early rounds when he was landing the big shots? And it's sort of like, especially the first round and stuff like that, when he was hard to pin down. But did, did he surprise you and were you thinking, oh, shit? No, definitely not. I said... Uh, you know, pull every interview that got, got said beforehand. I basically told you the rounds I'd stop them in. I said eight or nine, you know, a, and I said every every way how the fight to go. Okay, he started not better than I thought. I, probably, I started maybe a bit slower than I thought, but I knew he, he started fifth gear. I'd start fifth gear. I'd start first, and we were only going one way. He was going down. I was going up. Um, watched the back myself, and you know, I seen I seen people saying, like, even my Costello saying, Smith was Smith was hurt. He nails me flush. He doesn't ever hurt me. He doesn't ever rock me to me to me boots and have me all over the ring. You know, he nailed me flush. That that was that, and obviously I knew I knew I'd get better in the fight, and I knew I'd get to him, and I, and I, and I did get to him. Uh, the, you mentioned that Jesse Vargas. Was there a case of taking your eye off the ball a little bit? Because you wanted that Jesse Vargas fight long before. I think we were. In fact, it was December this time last year. We were talking about Vargas. Look, it was in the ring when I beat Sam Eggington. Eddie mentions it, and I thought, oh yeah, you've got Jesse Vargas. I thought that's a fight I'd want, and I thought the fight that makes sense now easy to me. And then, you know, not not Eddie's fault really. Eddie saw Mikey Garcia, and he made the Mikey Garcia fight for Jesse. So that was a no-brainer. But um, you know, the Fara fight, I was never going to take me off the ball because it was him, and because it was Liverpool. If it was somebody. I'm not discrediting on me, by the way, but if someone at the same level as Fowler with 16 fights, I maybe could have took me off the ball, but the fact with it being anti Fowler, he was from Liverpool, it sold out in no time. You know, that, that, that made me switch on to it, that made me get me teeth into training. And, you know, Shane McGuigan, he didn't really fuck up, but I don't know if he watched the cave and I fight and thought I was finished or something, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I showed him far from it. And even after the slow start, I still showed. You can keep throwing the domestic fighters at me all, all, all you want. I'm, 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 I'm still a level above them. Well, Jesse Vargas is a domestic fighter. I mean, he comes to fight. He, he's, he's probably got a good style for you in terms of a fan-friendly fight. He the has, fans are going to be happy. He has, and that's why I jumped at it. I thought, no way. You, you, I forgot he'd, he'd signed with Matchroom you know, USA at the time. And I just thought, whoa. That, and, and he like, I've done his heading over it for two years, but he put Jesse to me, Eddie, you know what I mean? I didn't mention Jesse. I remember it. I remember Joe after the fight saying Sergio Garcia, or I'm sure Brook might have got mentioned. And then they interviewed Eddie in the ring, and Eddie said, "Yeah, Kel Brook, Sergio Garcia, even Jesse Vargas." And I, and I just thought, "Ooh!" And that just rung a bell. And thought, you know, we, I know we like to fight. Jesse's got a good style. He's not a southpaw that's going to run away from me. And I just thought, that's a fight I want. That. And it's a name. He's a former world champion. He's only lost to Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley at the time. I know he's going to lose to. Mikey Garcia now, but I just thought that's a proper name. It's a world-class fighter, and it's a fight I'd love on my record. So I've, I've I've chased it for two years, and hopefully I've got it now. Finally, before I let you go, then you got a message for Jesse if he watches this. Yeah, obviously, just put all your congress aside. Make sure you're ready for February 5th. And, you know, let's have a proper fight. There we go, Liam. Thank you so much. Good to see you in Dubai, mate. That of course ruined old hands again, it. But but listen, good to see you again, my man. And uh, good luck when the fight does get announced. If it gets announced, then. Uh, the baby as well, thank mate. Thank you so much, Liam. Thank you so much, champ. Thank you.